YouTube fam, it's your girl Kasura Shans and welcome back to another video. Today we're delving into my sewing world because I haven't been posting as much sewing videos as I would like and it has always been my intention to teach and share the skills that I have gained while being in this space for about five years now. I've been sewing for my entire life basically but have been taking it serious for like the last five years. So I do have a lot of sewing tips and tricks sewing tips and tricks that i'd love to share with you so if you're interested in sewing continue watching this video today we'll be making something that is very special to me something that was out of my comfort zone a couple years ago but i have now honed the skills necessary to make this item so continue watching to see what it is and leave your reviews at the end of the video today we'll be working with this twill fabric as you can see here it is a whole lot of fabric guys like if you know tool, you know that it is very lightweight but when it comes in rows like these it's a lot so we'll be making a bridal robe with this and trust me i am so excited to see what the outcome will be and that's again sash on marrying the love of your life and i hope you love this robe so let's get into the tutorial and see how i'm gonna slay this like see how i'm gonna slay this robe guys like Give me a subscribe. Give me a subscribe from now because this robe, this robe I got sell up. Take it from me, the robe I got sell up. Girl, I'm going to look nice when I would in the air, tell you. So if you guys are interested in sewing videos like these, or if you're interested in learning how to sew or how to make certain garments, then this is definitely the channel for you. Stick around. Don't forget to subscribe. Share the video with a friend. And guys, join the Couture Gang. Is that what she calls now? The Couture Gang? that sounds really good join the couture gang or if you're a part of the couture gang be with yourself let's go okay guys so we'll be working in steps when cutting out the pieces for this luxurious sugar daddy robe as i like to call it it's actually a bridal robe in this case so what i do is i first take my tool and i try to cut it into smaller pieces so first we'll cut out the bodies then we'll cut the sleeves and then we'll cut the pieces that we need for the ruffles that will be lining the robe so I'm going to take my tool out of the package and get to cutting. So here's a list of what you need to complete your project. You first need the fabric of course, a rotary cutter, a long ruler, definitely will be needing a French curve for the armholes, you'll need a scissors, some handy dandy pins, can't work without those. And lastly, we need some tailor's chalk. We're going to start by measuring out the length of the robe, and this is entirely up to you. Um, for this robe, I want to go between 60 to about 65 inches long. So I'm gonna go and measure that out and cut it. again to ensure that you're on the right track and this is 30 inches and it's on fold so you know that's 60 inches in total and another 30 over here now we can actually go ahead and cut this if i told you you were beautiful would you date me on the regular tell me would you well baby i've been around the world See myself another girl like you. This ring here represents my heart. But there's just one thing I need from you. Say I do. Because I can see us holding hands, walking on the beach, our toes in the sand. I can see us on the countryside, sitting on the grassland side by side. You could be my So we'll start by cutting out the strips for the ruffles that will be placed along the edges of the robe. My material here measures about 28 inches wide, so I divided that by 4 and you'd get 7 inches per strip. So here I'm going to take my ruler and my rotary cutter, which is so much easier than using a scissors, and it leaves some sharp, precise edges at that. I love my rotary cutter. Guys, I've been cutting out tool for the past half an hour or so and this is the final piece that i have to cut before we can get to sewing 
which is my favorite part of fashion design because all this cutting and, and pattern making and all these things nah, sewing is where the fun is at so let's get this cutting and then we can move on okay so we cut out our major pieces our major pattern pieces that will be needed and now it's time to true them to the specifications of the body of the person who will be wearing it so this robe is actually an xl because she is a bit busty and she has wide hips as well so we're going to use her body measurements to throw up this um, pattern that I cut out and yeah let's go okay so we're working on the front bodice now so from the edge you want to mark about eight inches across and about 10 inches down in order to create your arm hole we're gonna take the French curve and curve it out We're then going to use our rotary cutter to cut this out. See how that just glides on the fabric? Oh my goodness. So we just cut straight across and here we have our armhole curve. We're just going to pin that together and put it aside. So in order for the front bodice to match perfectly with the shoulders of the back bodice, we'll place some gathering stitches at the top to easily place it there. Now we're on to the back bodice. We're working on the neckline first, so from center front, you'd want to mark about 4 inches in and about 1.5 inches downwards to create our back neckline curve. Again, we do need the French ruler for this and you just curve it out just like so. Using your tailor's chalk or pins, whatever is better for you. And then you just take your rotary cutter or scissors and cut it out. Now we're moving on to the back shoulder width, which is about 7 inches wide. So we're going to take our tailor's chalk and mark that point. And similar to the front bodice, we're going to mark down about 10 inches. Square it across. And then get our French curve again to curve it out. So the armhole width and depth is entirely up to you and how wide you want your armhole to be. So again, we're just taking the rotary cutter and cutting this out. Next up, we'll be working on the sleeves. So my sleeves here are about 22 inches long and we definitely want to give some drama to the sleeves. So we're looking at a bell shape. As such, I marked across about 20 inches, which is 40 inches in total. Talk about dramatic. I then brought out my standard sleeve pattern, which I use for most of my garments, and will be making some alterations to fit this client's measurements. So I started out by doing an extension to my sleeve block by adding about 3 to 4 inches to the width. Remember, we're going for dramatic sleeves here, so we need it to be as wide as possible. I use my tailor's chalk to mark around with a seam allowance of about an inch and then placed my measuring tape from that point to the end of our sleeves and marked it out. So the first thing we're going to do is run a gathering stitch on the top part of the front bodice so it can easily ease in <laughs> easily ease in oh my god so it can easily fit into the back bodice so we're going to put our stitch can you see so we're going to put our stitch length at about 10 and our tension at about 9 which is the highest tension there is and the longest stitch that there is on this sewing machine i'm going to gently place it in do or as 
you can see it's already gathering i'm not going to back stitch we're going to pull it out leaving a tail So this is the result of our gathering and we're going ahead to just measure it to see if it will fit perfectly into the back shoulder. So I usually secure my gathering by tying a knot with that loose thread that we had left hanging. So we're going to go ahead and do that and work on the other one. Next on the agenda is basically stitching down the back neckline for a clean finish. So I usually do a double fold and then place some pins to secure it in place. This will help you so much when you're actually stitching it down. So this is how the back neckline is looking after it was folded and stitched. So next we're going to take the front bodice and the back bodice and pin them together at the shoulders. Remember we place those gathering stitches and sometimes you have to either loosen them or tighten them for them to actually match the back shoulder width. So after we're through pinning, we're going to take this to the serger, serge the edges, then take it back to the sewing machine to place a straight stitch for security purposes. <laughs> to secure it, this plate. And now on to the fun part. So we're going to take our strips that we had cut out to make the ruffles for the lining of the robe. So all we do is just take a straight stitch and run it down the middle. A pro tip is to get a shearing foot. Listen, this foot has changed my life completely. You no longer have to create your ruffles using the thread method where you have to sit for hours and pull it through. This foot is magical, I tell you. It does all the work for you. So invest in a shearing foot if you are working on a project like this. So we're going to place the needle in the center of the strips and we are going to adjust our tension again to the highest tension that there is and the longest stitch length and stitch straight down. So I'm going to baste in stitch. I'm just going to line up the two. basically creating the gathers already I'm gonna go and pull this out and just continue stitching down the center <laughs> So 
these are the ruffles oh my goodness the shearing foot did a great job so i'm just pre-fluffing them and then we'll move on so far we have attached the back to the front of the robe so what? now we'll be working on the gathers to attach to the edges and the bottom then we'll be putting the gathers on the sleeve before we put the sleeve on the actual robe because it's so much easier to work with like that but it is coming along very nicely. Can't wait for it to be, you know, cinched in at the waist and to come together. So yeah. So this is all the ruffles that I have so far. I've been ruffling all day. It is about 8.05. Oh my goodness. I think I've been at it since like 5 or 6. But this is what I'm working with. They're unfluffed so it's not as voluminous as it will be in the end and now i have to work on attaching all of this to the robe guys so that's the next step so i'll just be placing it at the edge about a quarter of an inch away from the actual edge and just running a straight stitch down the center here to cut away the excess always remember to leave at least a quarter of an inch or so for your seam allowance so you can actually close up the sleeve so i'm just going to go ahead and cut the excess and we're left with our sleeve this is how it's looking Pretty voluminous, it's pretty wide, and we'll go ahead and fluff it out later on. So, just going to go ahead and do the next one. So, now we're basically pinning our sleeve into the armhole, and it's kind of hard to see because it's white, but I am able to actually match up the curve and pin it. And then we're going to serge and then place a straight stitch for security as always so let's continue pinning around until you're comfortable enough that all the layers are together and then you take it to the serger the straight stitch exactly below where we surged and as I said it's just for added security we're going to do this along all our seams and once I'm done here I'm going to close up the sleeve and the sides of the gown and then I'll give you guys another quick update to see how it's looking so the sleeves are now attached to the robe itself and we're at the final stage now where all we have to do is add the ruffles to the edges and the bottom so i'm gonna do that and come back in five four three two okay so for this road i'm actually going to go ahead and add the ruffles starting at the front and i just measured down about 20 inches and placed a pin so i can know where to start so I am going to now just place the ruffles on top and just stitch a straight stitch all around. 
and I'm catching up on MTM family in the meantime guys comment down below if you are the biggest MTM fans because I am definitely a first cousin let me know if you are too and let's just chat voluminous look i absolutely love how it turned out and i can't wait for you guys to see the final product so let's get to plopping and then the big reveal <laughs> the video i am so in love with how the robe turned out i hope you guys love it too throw a like down there hit the thumbs up button if you really love this robe just as much as i do hit that subscribe button if you loved this video if you love me if you want to be a part of the couture gang like come on hit the subscribe so thank you guys for always returning to my channel to check out all the goodness over here if you're new welcome i'm so happy to have you as a part of the couture gang and it's only up from here only good things to come so hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video it's probably a vlog guys that's all i'm gonna do but i'll see you in the next video bye